during conjugation number of nuclei that disintegrate in both micro and macro conjugant in verticell by the end of gametic nuclei or pronuclei formation now this is the micro conjugant and this is the macro conjugant in the micro conjugant this is the macro nucleus in the macro conjugant this is the macro nucleus during the process of conjugation the macro nucleus disappears one now this is micro nucleus in the micro conjugant body the micro nucleus undergoes meiosis one meiosis two and mitosis now we are getting how many haploid nuclei eight haploid nuclei in the eight haploid nuclei how many will disappear the seven will disappear now as we observe the female conjugant the macro nucleus disappears and the micro nucleus undergoes the meiosis 1 meiosis 2 you are getting four nuclei out of four haploid nuclei how many disappear three will disappear now 3 plus 1 4 7 plus 1 8 8 plus 4 how many nuclei disappear by the end of pronuclei formation the correct answer is 12 nuclei now we go for the next question formation of migratory and stationary pronuclei occurs in now as we observe the male conjugant in the male conjugant seven disappear the leftover nucleus again undergoes mitosis now in the micro conjugant we are going to observe this is one female pronuclear this is male pronuclear in the same way in the female conjugant this micro nucleus undergoes mitosis now we are getting how many pronuclei two pronuclei this is the female pronuclei and male pronuclei that means as we observe the verticell in female conjugant as well as in male conjugant we have to observe the formation of pronuclei now options only macro conjugant only micro conjugant in both the conjugants so the third option is correct now we move for the next question during conjugation in verticell during conjugation in verticell the amphi mixes occur in one we call it as macro conjugant one we call it as micro conjugant one we call it as adult verticella and both one and two after formation of pronuclei this is the female conjugant and male conjugant after the formation of pronuclei after the formation of pronuclei the nuclear material will be exchanged cytoplasm will be exchanged only only in the female conjugant the two pronuclei will undergo fusion that we call it as amphi mixis or fertilization now during conjugation in verticell the amphi mixis occurs in macro conjugant only that is the correct one now we go for the next question during conjugation the daughter verticell which resembles adult first appears after the following event now again i am repeating the question during conjugation daughter verticella which resembles adult first appears after the following events now as we observe the verticella in the verticella how many macronuclei one macronucleus one micronucleus that is the normal verticella now as we observe the conjugation as we observe the conjugation now this one we call it as the zygote now this undergoes three mitotic divisions we are getting eight nuclei we are getting eight nuclei out of eight nuclei seven nuclei will become macro and one nucle one will become the micronucleus now this one undergoes the first post conjugation fusion how many daughter individuals will be obtained two daughter individuals now this is one daughter individual another daughter individual here how many macronuclei three here how many macronuclei four now these two individuals will undergo the second post conjugation fusion we are getting 
now this is one daughter another daughter another daughter another daughter now here two macro one micro two macro one micro here two macro and one micro this is one macro one micro now as yes, we observe the normal verticella in the normal verticella one macro one micro present now after second post conjugation fusion we are getting the normal verticella here the normal verticella means one macro one micro now you have to observe options first post conjugation fusion second post conjugation fusion now what is the correct answer the second one now we go for the next question number of successive post zygotic nuclear divisions now after completing the amphimixis now this is the female conjugand as we observe the female conjugand this is the female pronucleus this is the female pronucleus of female conjugand now this is the male pronucleus of male conjugand so it is called non self now the female pronucleus of female conjugand the male pronucleus of male conjugand will undergo fusion that we call it as the amphimixis after amphimixis we are getting the syncarion the syncarion present in the female conjugand now syncarion plus female conjugand that we call it as the zygote now as we observe the zygote the zygote undergoes how many successive divisions three successive divisions they are called post zygotic nuclear divisions after completing the post zygotic nuclear divisions how many nuclei will be obtained eight nuclei after out of eight nuclei how many are macro seven and how many will become micro only one now number of successive post zygotic nuclear divisions during conjugation is equal to the number of first option is three second one is two third one is four and the fourth one is one now what is the correct answer that we call it as three that is first option three post zygotic nuclear divisions move for the next question now during the binary fission in paramecium the daughter individual which receives the cytopharynx of the parent also receives now as yes, we observe the asexual reproduction in case of paramecium now this is the body of paramecium in the body of paramecium this is one contractile vacuole another contractile vacuole now this one we call it as anterior contractile vacuole this is called posterior contractile vacuole now this is called the cytopharynx now whatever it may be the parent paramecium undergoes asexual reproduction by transverse binary fission after completing the transverse binary fission this anterior part we call it as protor and this posterior part we call it as opis this one we call it as opis and this one we call it as protor now the protor receives the cytopharynx of the parent and one of the contractile vacuoles the protor receives the original anterior contractile vacuole and original cytopharynx based on this information during the binary fission in paramecium the daughter individual which receives the cytopharynx of the parent also receives orla group both the contractile vacuoles one of the contractile vacuoles all kinesia the correct answer for this question is one of the contractile vacuole now go for the next question identify the correct pair from the following now what is meant by monotonic bud only one bud forms what is the second one endogenous bud the bud develops inside the body what is meant by isogamy fusion of similar gametes what is meant by anisogamy the fusion of dissimilar gametes here what is the question identify the correct pair the second one that we call it as endogenous budding what is meant by endogenous budding bud develops inside the body what is the best example acinata commander the sartorians now go for the next question micro conjugant of verticella is characterized by as we observe the verticella micro conjugant this is micro conjugant it is also called the male conjugant represented by this sign 
Now, in micro conjugate, this one we call it as peristomium. Here, peristomium, what are present? The cilia present. Now, this is called anterior end or oral end. The cilia present at the anterior end called peristomal cilia, also called adoral cilia. Now, in the micro conjugate, this is the posterior end or aboral end. At posterior end, again, what are present? The cilia. Here, the cilia are called aboral cilia. Now, if the conjugate having two sets of cilia, no doubt that is the micro conjugate. Now, you have to identify. Micro conjugate of verticella is characterized by adoral cilia, aboral cilia, both the adoral and aboral cilia. The fourth one is adoral cilia and stock. Now, the correct answer is adoral and aboral cilia. Now, move for the next question. Now, during the conjugation in verticella, again repeated, during conjugation in verticella, the number of daughter individuals that undergo third series of post-conjugation fusion. Now, as we observe, this is the one individual. In this individual, four macronuclei and one micronucleus. Now, this undergoes first post-conjugation fusion. We are getting how many individuals? Two. Now, these undergo second post-conjugation fusion. We are getting how many individuals? Four individuals. But out of four individuals, already we discussed this one. We call it as normal verticella. Remaining three, as we observe these three individuals, here two macro, one micro. Here two macro, one micro. Here two macro, one micro. Now, in the third post-conjugation fusion, how many individuals participate? One, two, three. Now, what is the correct answer? The third option that we call it as the three individuals participate. Now, we go for the next question. The movement of cilia of longitudinal row of a kinetia paramecium. Again, it is repeating. The movement of cilia of longitudinal row of a kinetia of paramecium. Now, as we observe the body of paramecium, now this is the body of paramecium. In the body of paramecium, then some cilia are arranged transversely. Some cilia are arranged longitudinally. Now, this is anterior end, this is the posterior end. Now, the longitudinal row of cilia are extending from anterior to posterior. Here the question, the movement of cilia of longitudinal row or of a kinetic of paramecium. What is meant by kinetic? A longitudinal row of kinetogens, kinetodesmata, kinetodesmal fibrils that we call it as one kinetic. Here the asking question is the movement of cilia of longitudinal row. The cilia of longitudinal row will beat water one after another. Again repeating, the cilia of longitudinal row will beat to water one after another or sequentially. Such type of movement brought by longitudinal row of cilia, we call it as metachronous movement. Now, you have to observe the third option that we call it as the sequential, also called the metachronous. Now, we go for the next question. Method of nuclear organization in which nuclear fusion does not occur. Now, as we observe the methods of sexual reproduction, one we call it as conjugation and the second one we call it as autogamy, third one we call it as cytogamy and the last one we call it as endomixis. In the conjugation, how many individuals participate? Two. In the autogamy, how many individuals participate? Only one. In the endomixis also, how many individuals participate? One. As we observe the endomixis, in the endomixis, the macronucleus disappears. Such disappeared macronucleus reorganized from the micronucleus. Now, you have to identify the answer. Method of nuclear organization in which nuclear fusion does not occur because the macronucleus disappears. 
one we call it as cytogamy, second one we call it as conjugation, third one we call it as autogamy and the last one we call it as endomixis. In the endomixis there is no nuclear fusion because the macronucleus disappears and reappears from the micronucleus. The correct answer is the fourth one. Now we go for the next question. Inuopalaina, again repeating, inuopalaina, during the plasmatomy, plasmatomy is the method of asexual reproduction. Opalaina come under the superclass opalinata. Already we discussed regarding this one. What is meant by plasmatomy? It is a method of asexual reproduction. During plasmatomy only cytoplasm divides. The divisions of cytoplasm we call it as cytokinesis. The divisions of nucleus we call it as karyokinesis. Here in the plasmatomy only cytokinesis but not karyokinesis. Now you have to observe no cytokinesis but karyokinesis. No karyokinesis but cytokinesis. Both karyo and cytokinesis. Both karyo and cytokinesis does not occur. Now only cytokinesis but not the karyokinesis. Now what is the correct answer? The second one. Now we have to discuss some more bits regarding the locomotion and reproduction. Now you have to study the question. The first one is study the following and choose the correct combination. Here this is three columns matching are a link question. Now in the first column what is present pseudopodia. Second one what is present the structure. Third one we call it as example. Now in the first column what are present lobopodia, reticulopodia, phylopodia and exopodia. In the second column what is present only ectoplasm and branched filamentous and net like. And the third one is only ectoplasm. And the fourth one is granular and adhesive cytoplasm. And the third column, entamoeba, globi gerina, eugalypha and colosum. Students, already you got an idea regarding this question. Now, you have to observe the lobopodium. In the lobopodium, both ecto endoplasm present. But in the second class, uh, column, what is present? Only ectoplasm. So, we don't go for the third column, eliminated. What about the reticulopodia? No doubt they are branched, filamentous and net like. Now the second one is correct. What is the third column? What is the example? Globi gerina. So the second one is correct. What is the third one? Phylopodia. For the formation of phylopodia, only ectoplasm participate. What are the examples for the phylopodia? Eugalypha and lecithium. So the third one is correct. What about the fourth one? Exopodia. In the exopodia, what type of cytoplasm? Sticky granular. What is the example? Colosovum. Now, you identify the correct answer. Second one, third one and the fourth one. Now, we go for the next question. The following are... Now, we go for the second question. The following are the statements about the locomotion in protozoa. Now, first of all, don't go for the statements. After the statements, what they asked, what is the correct combination? Now, you study these statements. All the locomotory organelles of protozoans help in food collection. All the locomotory organelles of protozoans help in food collection. Now, take for example, pseudopodia. The pseudopodia are classified into lobopodia. Lobopodia help in the food collection and locomotion. Phylopodia, reticulopodia and exopodia. Pseudopodia help in food collection and locomotion. Cilia, it helps in food collection and locomotion. Flagella, it helps only in the locomotion. Myonemes, it help only in the locomotion. Proteinaceous strips, they help only in the locomotion. Here what is the statement first? All the locomotory organelle are protozoans help in food collection. So it is the wrong. Go for the next one. Amoeboid movement can be noticed even in some cells of metajovans. Now, what are the metajovans? The multicellular animals. In the multicellular animals, take for example, WBC. They perform amoeboid movement. In the same way, phagocytes, they perform the amoeboid movement. So, 
metajoans are also called multicellular animals in the multicellular animals some wbc and macrophages are amoeboid cells they perform the amoeboid movement so based on this information the second statement is correct what is the third one the bending movement of flagellum and cilia is due to complex cycle of movements by dynamics now as we observe the bending movement this is one doublet in each doublet how many microtubules two this one a and this one b how many doublets are present nine doublets are present now these are dynamic arms now this is one doublet and this is the second doublet again it is a b how many dynamic arms two dynamic arms now as we observe this is the ninth doublet it has a and b and dynamic arms during the bending movement this doublet with the help of dynamic arms attach the neighboring doublet and pulls the doublet so during the bending movement the dynamic arms they rotate in a cyclic manner oppositely so now the bending movement of flagellum and cilium is due to complex cyclical movements by the dynamic arms so the second and the third options are the correct now go for the next question pseudopodia which are tapering from base to tip are present now as we observe the phyllopodia in the phyllopodia one example we call it as yogalypha lecithium now this is either yogalypha or lecithium that is the body of yogalypha or lecithium now this one we call it as pseudopodium now this part we call it as base and this part we call it as tip now you have to identify the question pseudopodia which are tapering from base to tip now these are phyllopodia from the base to tip they are tapering that means it has the pointed tips that is the meaning for that question pseudopodia which are tapering from base to tip are present in one is amoeba second one globigerina third one lecithium and the fourth one is collojovum what is the correct answer lecithium now we go for the next question mastigamoeba mastigamoeba you have to observe the question mastigamoeba mastig that means flagellum amoeba pseudopodium now mastigamoeba it is an organism it come under the mastigophora it is a flagellated organism this is the only accepted organism having both flagellum and pseudopodium now you observe the examples rhizopodian with pseudopodia actinopodian with pseudopodia mastigophoran with pseudopodia sarcodyn with pseudopodia now based on this information it is a flagellator mastigophoran it has both flagellum and pseudopodium now what is the correct answer the third now go for the next question a future or character common to the pseudopodia in foraminiferans and radiolarians now once again you have to observe the question a character common to the pseudopodia in foraminiferans and radiolarians what is the example for the foraminiferans that we call it as elipidium what is the other name of elipidium the polystomella again it is repeated what is the example for the foraminiferan elipidium what is the other name of elipidium polystomella in foraminiferans the body is covered by shell the shell has minute pores the shell is made by calcium carbonate now in the elipidium what type of pseudopodia are present reticulopodia now in collojovum and in the actinophrys actinosperium what type of pseudopodia are present axopodia as we observe reticulopodia and axopodia their primary function is food collection secondary function is locomotion in this aspect both are common now what are the options they are interconnected to form a network like pseudopodia also called mixopodia primarily or principally food collection structure so the third option is correct go for the next question 
the number of microtubules in the basal granule of cilia or flagellum. Now, this one we call it as a pellicle. Below pellicle, what is the present plasma lemma? Below plasma lemma, what is the present ectoplasm? Now, in the ectoplasm, what is the present basal granule? Now, as we observe the transverse section of basal granule, in the transverse section of basal granule, this is one triplet, this is another triplet, this is another triplet, this is another triplet, one, two, three, four, and this is another triplet, and this is another triplet, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is another triplet, and this is another triplet and this is another triplet. Now, you have to observe in each triplet how many microtubules? 1, 2, 3. Total number of triplets? 9. In each triplet how many microtubules? 3. Totally how many microtubules? 27 microtubules. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? The fourth one. Now, we go for the next question. The next question is in flagellates, comma, Mastigonemes or flimmers, if present, they are attached to two. Once again, repeating the question. In flagellates, mastigonemes, they are also called the flimmers or lateral appendages. If present, are attached to two. One we call it as a pellicle. Second one we call it as axoneme. Third one we call it as a central singlets by radial spokes. Protoplasmic sheath around the axoneme. Now, this is pellicle, plasma lemma, ectoplasm, basal granule, and this one we call it as axoneme. The entire axoneme is covered and protected by protoplasmic sheath. We know very well. Attached to axoneme. What are present? The flimmers or mastigonemes or lateral appendages. You have to observe the diagram. The axoneme is covered and protected by protoplasmic sheath. Now, you have to observe the options. As we observe the fourth option, protoplasmic sheath around the axoneme. That is the appropriate answer for this question. Suppose, in the examination, if the fourth option is absent, what is the answer we are going to attempt? The lateral appendages or flimmers or mastigonemes attached to two axoneme in the absence of fourth option. Now we go for the next question. Streamlined protozoan body. What is meant by streamlined protozoan body? The body is pointed at both the ends. The body appears to be fish like or the body appears to be spindle shape. Streamlined protozoan body increases the surface area. Now, this is the streamlined body. Because of the streamlined body, the surface area increases. How we can calculate the surface area? Based on the number of blood capillaries. If blood capillaries are less in number, the surface area is less. If the blood capillaries are more, the surface area is more. Now, this is the streamlined body, the surface area is more. What is going to happen? Because of the streamlined body, the surface area is more. So, more and more and more and more, the water molecules are attached to the surface of the body. As more and more water molecules are attached to the body, what type of drag we are going to observe? The viscous drag. Now, you observe the question and options. Streamlined protozoan body increases surface area to which water molecules attach. What is the result? One option is decreased viscous drag. Second one increased viscous drag. Third one increasing pressure drag. Fourth one no change in the movement. Now what is the correct answer? The increasing viscous drag. Go for the next question. Now assertion. Protozoans are small in size, no doubt. All protozoans body is made by one cell. They are unicellular. They are microscopic. Without microscopic, they are not visible. So, they are called animalcules. Because of the small sized body, what is going to benefit? Now, protozoans are small in size 
and so viscous drag is much importance. Now, what is the second option? Body size or volume and surface area inversely proportional to each other. Hence, protozoans have more surface area. As we observe the protozoans, in the protozoans, two types of drags are present. One we call it as the viscous drag and the second one we call it as the pressure drag. But in the protozoans, the body is not the streamlined because the body is small in size. Though the body is small in size, what type of drag is more important? The viscous drag. What is the reason for this assertion? Now, body size or volume and surface area are inversely proportional to each other so that though the body is small in size the surface area is more more water molecules are attached and the viscous drag is more so both the a and r are correct r explains a now go for the next question arrange the following mastigo fours all these are flagellates arrange the following flagellates in a ascending order according to the number of flagella they have. Now, as we observe the euglena, in the euglena how many flagella? Two flagella. In the cerasium how many flagella? Two flagella. Now, in the trichomonas how many flagella? Four. In the giardia how many flagella? Eight. In the trichonympha how many flagella? Many. In the trypanosoma gambiense how many flagella? One. Here the asking question is ascending order small to high. Now arrange the following flagellates in a ascending order based on the number of flagella possessed by them. Now one we call it as a GRDA. In the GRDA how many flagella? Eight. In Euglena how many? Two. In Trichonympha how many? Many. In the Trichomonas how many? Four. In the Trypanosoma how many? One. Now in the Trypanosoma one. In the Euglena, how many? Two. In the Trichomonas, how many? Four. And in the GRDA, how many? Eight. In the Trichonympha, how many? Many. So, based on this information, what is the correct answer? Second one. Now, go for the next question. Locomotory organelle that bear lateral appendages. Now, as we observe the flagellum and cilium, as we observe the flagellum, these are the only locomotory organelle having lateral appendages. Based on their size, the lateral appendages are classified into mastigonemes or flimmers. These are the units for the classification of flagella. Now, here what are the locomotory organelle having the lateral appendages? The best answer is flagella. Now, go for the next question. Flagellum without any taxonomical important structures on it is. Again repeating. Flagellum without any taxonomical important structures on it is. As we observe the flagella, one we call it as stichonematic. Second one we call it as pantonematic. Third one we call it as acronematic. Fourth one pantochronematic. And the last one we call it as animatic. As we observe the animatic flagellum, this is the pellicle, plasma lemma, ectoplasm and the basal granule. And this one we call it as axoneme, covered and protected by protoplasmic sheath. Now, you have to observe the diagram. In the animatic flagellum, there is no terminal filament. What is meant by terminal filament? It is the part of axoneme in which protoplasmic sheath absent. But as we observe the animatic, here no terminal filament and lateral appendages. So, it has no taxonomical importance. It is the simplest flagellum. So, what is the correct answer for this question? We call it as animatic. What is the next question? Now, Spot out the flagellates without lateral appendages on their flagella. Now pick out the flagella without lateral appendages. Spot out or pick out the flagellates without lateral appendages on their flagella. Now the first one we call it as stichonematic. 
in the stichonematic lateral appendages present. One example is euglena and astasia. And the second one we call it as pantonematic. Two or more rows of mastogonyms are present. What is the example paranima and the monas? What is the third one we call it as achronematic? In the achronematic lateral appendages absent. What are the example polytoma and chlamydomonas? And the next one we call it as pantochronematic. In the pantochronematic, two or more rows of lateral appendages. One example is archeolus. And the last one we call it as animatic. In the animatic lateral appendages are absent. Now, based on this information, you have to pick out the correct answer. What is the correct answer for this question? One option that is chlamydomonas. In the chlamydomonas, a chronomatic flagellum. That means no lateral appendages. Chylomonas and cryptomonas come under animatic lateral appendages absent. Polytoma come under a chronomatic lateral appendages absent. Based on this information, the correct answer is first. Now we go for the next question. Celia are present only in the young stages. Now, as we observe the subphylum ciliophora, in the subphylum ciliophora, one class is ciliata. In the class ciliata, one type of organisms we call it as sectorians. What are the examples for the sectorians? One example is acinata and ephilota. In the sectorians, only in the young stage cilia present. In the adult stage, they are replaced by the tentacles. What is the function of tentacles? The tentacles help to suck the food materials. Based on this information, they got the name sectorians. Now, in the sectorians, only in the young stage the cilia present. Now, what is the example for the sectorians? Acinata ephilota. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? The third one that we call it as acinata. Now, move for the next question. Among the protozoans, coordinated locomotion developed for the first time. Now, as we observe the ciliates, in the ciliates, what is the present infraciliary system? What is meant by infraciliary system? This is one kinety and this is another kinety, another kinety, another kinety. All kinetics are united to form infraciliary system. The infraciliary system plus motorium, that we call it as a neuromotor system. Now, this is information for this question. Now, among the protozoans, coordinated locomotion developed for the first time. One is sarcodines eliminated. Third one, ciliates. Second one, sporozoans. Fourth one, flagellates. Where the neuromotor system is present in the ciliates. Now, what is the correct answer? The ciliates. Now, we go for the next question. The locomotor structures that does not arise from kinetogenes. What is the meaning of kinetogen? Basal granule. The basal granule is also called kinetogen. Now, as we observe the flagella, they arise from the basal granule. Cilia, they arise from the basal granule. What about the pseudopodia? They develop by the contraction and relaxation of the cytoplasm. So, it is not considered. Now, what about the myonemes? The myonemes are nothing but the muscle fibers. Now, the myonemes do not arise from the basal granules. Now, regarding the options, what is the correct answer? The myonemes. Now, move for the next question. Neuromotor system of ciliates are formed by, again I am repeating, a longitudinal row of kinetogenes connected by kinetodesmata, kinetodesmal fibrils. That we call it as kinety. This is one kinety. This is another kinety, another kinety, another kinety, another kinety. Innumerable kinetics are present. All kinetics unite to form infraciliary system. Now, the infraciliary system attached to motorium. The motorium present near cytopharynx. Infraciliary system plus motorium we call it as neuromotor system. This neuromotor system first developed in the ciliates. So, in protozoans, 
particularly in the ciliates the locomotion is controlled and coordinated so the ciliates are the fastest protozoans now neuromotor system of ciliates are formed by infraciliary system plus motorium now go for the next question cilia last coordination if the following is destroyed now this is infraciliary system and this is motorium infraciliary system attached to motorium if motorium is removed among the cilia there is no coordination and control now cilia last coordination if the following is destroyed one we call it as the trichocyst eliminated second one micronucleus eliminated third one cytopharynx eliminated based on this information what is the correct option that is the motorium move for the next question infraciliary system is present in only in all ciliates as we observe the ciliates body is covered by pellicle now as we observe this is one ciliate the entire body is covered and protected by pellicle now the pellicle is removed if the pellicle is removed the next part is plasma lemma now the plasma lemma is removed the next part is ectoplasm in the ectoplasm what is present the infraciliary system now infraciliary system is present in ectoplasm of ciliophorans endoplasm of all ciliates and flagellates pellicle layer of all ciliates and flagellates pellicle layer of only ciliates second third fourth are eliminated the correct answer for this question is only first one ectoplasm of ciliates now move for the next question locomotory organs that fused to form undulating membrane again it is repeating locomotory organs are organelle that fuse to form undulating membrane now as we observe the differences between flagella and cilia generally flagellum is one in number it does not form compound structure but as we observe the cilia they are more in number minimum number of cilia is 3000 as they are more in number they are going to produce compound structures that is the angular membrane and membrane le and cirri now here what are the options flagellum it does not produce compound structures pseudopodium does not produce only cilia produce compound structures one we call it as undulating membrane second one membrane le third one we call it as cirri now go for the next question two flagella at right angles to each other now this is the body of cerasium in the body of cerasium this is one flagellum and second flagellum they are at right angles to one another now as we observe the euglena in the euglena also how many flagella present two flagella but in the body of euglena the flagella are two and separate before coming the smaller flagellum attaches to the longer flagellum but in case of cerasium as we observe the flagella in the body of cerasium the two flagella are arranged at right angles to one another now what is the correct answer cerasium now move for the next question interconvertibility of sol and gel now what is meant by gel ectoplasm what is meant by sol endoplasm now in the protozoans the sol and gel are interconvertibility they move sol becomes gel gel becomes sol the gel absorbs water and becomes the sol the sol loses water and becomes the gel that is interconvertibility such interconvertibility of sol and gel is an example of biochemical change eliminated biophysical change eliminated only physical change eliminated it is a physico chemical change now what is the correct answer the second one now we go for the next question which of the following is a true statement now plasma gel by losing water becomes plasma sol now plasma gel losing water becomes plasma sol that is the wrong one second one plasma sol by taking water becomes the plasma gel that is also the wrong one now 
plasma salt to plasma gel transformation is solution wrong salt becomes gel that is called the gelation gel becomes salt that we call it as solution now plasma gel it absorbs water and becomes the salt that fourth statement is correct one now we go for the next question during amoeboid movement zone of gelation occur at uroid end what is meant by uroid end the posterior end at the posterior end gel becomes salt that we call it as the solution so the first option is wrong zone of solution occurs at the advanced end at the advanced end salt becomes gel that we call it as a gelation so second option is wrong third zone of gelation occurs at the hyaline cap as we observe the body of amoeba this is the body of amoeba this is uroid or posterior end this is anterior advanced end this is a hyaline cap here the salt becomes gel that we call it as a gelation so in the body where the gelation takes place at the advanced anterior end students we have to discuss in the next class regarding the earthworm life history